In 1681, William Penn received a royal charter from King Charles II for 45,000 square miles. This essentially made Penn the largest landowner in British North America. But with so much real estate, Penn had to attract people, and more importantly money, to his new colony. One of the first things Penn did was meet with a group of Welsh Quakers who desired their own county within Penn's colony. Penn agreed to this and carved out an area known as the Welsh Tract. While this area never became its own county and instead it was incorporated into parts of Philadelphia and Chester counties, it was predominantly settled by many Welsh families who pushed further and further west into the Pennsylvania frontier. They extended beyond the original Welsh Tract and settled above the Great Valley near branches of the Brandywine Creek. By 1712, settlers had formed a new municipality and named it Euclid, meaning high above the valley. Notice that Euclid Township, as originally surveyed in 1712, did not include that strange thumb. So where did it come from? Well, for that answer, we need to keep looking north to the land of Dr. Daniel Cox, Sir Matthias Vincent, and Major Robert Thompson. Collectively, these three men owned 30,000 acres which would become parts of modern day East Vincent, West Vincent, East Pikeland, West Pikeland, Spring City, a small section of South Coventry, and of course, Upper Euclid. Remember, Penn had 45,000 square miles. He not only needed to attract families into his colony, but he also needed to attract investors. Yes, discussions of colonial Pennsylvania are often fixed around this idea of a holy experiment, Penn's desire to establish a peaceful community built on religious freedom. But Penn realized that he needed to establish a solid commercial foundation if his colony had any chance of success. Therefore, he turned to the English merchant class, most of whom lived not far from London. One member of the merchant class was Dr. Daniel Cox. Cox and Penn, they were quite familiar with one another due to their relationship with the king. Penn, of course, received his charter directly from King Charles II, who owed Penn's father, Admiral William Penn, a substantial debt for the elder Penn's involvement in the English Civil Wars. And Cox was quite close to the royal court as well, serving as the court physician. Now, both Penn and Cox were also heavily invested in West New Jersey, Cox at one time being the largest financial investor, and Penn, of course, he was closely monitoring the Quaker happenings there before he received a charter to establish his own colony. While Penn needed to establish a solid commercial foundation for his colony, Cox was rapidly investing in North American land intent on creating a great fur trading company. It was a perfect match. Penn had land, a lot of it, and Cox won at land, a lot of it. In 1686, Cox purchased 10,000 acres in Chester County, as did his two friends, Matthias Vincent and Robert Thompson. Collectively, the three men jointly owned 30,000 contiguous acres along the Schuylkill, a prime location ideally situated near the Pennsylvania frontier and on a major artery feeding into the commercial ports at Philadelphia. Now Cox, Vincent, and Thompson were all invested in the new Mediterranean Sea Company, a London enterprise that had raised more than 10,000 pounds to capitalize on the North American fur trade. The French had built their entire colonial empire by exploiting the fur trade from Louisiana up through the Great Lakes and into Canada. Cox won it in on this, and this massive tract of 30,000 acres was only the beginning. Cox had grand ambitions to purchase nearly 100,000 acres from Penn under the auspices of the new Mediterranean Sea Company that would connect this tract of land in Chester County along the Schuylkill all the way to the Great Lakes region. Furs from beavers, wildcats, and bears could be acquired in the North American interior and then easily transported across this land bridge to the Schuylkill and export it to Europe. Now, this sounds like a good plan, right? Well, things didn't quite work out for Dr. Cox and his buddies. It's not entirely clear how seriously Penn took these plans, but according to scholarship, a warrant for 100,000 acres was in fact prepared for the new Mediterranean Sea Company, but it was never actually signed or executed by Penn. 
Penn was unwilling to commit to this large land transaction, and you can understand his reservations. Penn's colony had only existed for five years, and granting this much land to a single company monopolizing the Pennsylvania fur trade would have completely challenged Penn's power and authority as the proprietor. Cox's grandiose aspirations for the new Mediterranean Sea Company never materialized in Pennsylvania. He encountered resistance from Penn, and to make matters worse, his close partners Vincent and Thompson had both died early on. Vincent in 1687 and Thompson in 1691. When Vincent died in 1687, his estate wanted no part of Cox's business activities. And despite Cox's best attempt to purchase Vincent's share, the estate immediately sold the warrant rights for the 10,000 acres to Joseph Pike, who in 1705 received the patent for the area which eventually became Pikeland Township. Now when Thompson died in 1691, his 10,000 acre share was entangled in a messy estate proceedings, and Cox saw the writing on the wall and he disengaged from his Pennsylvania ambitions. In 1692, he sold his own Chester County tract of 10,000 acres to the West New Jersey Society, a joint stock company with vast land holdings in Pennsylvania and, you know, go figure West New Jersey. Okay. So what does any of this have to do with Upper Euclid Township? Well, the land remained in possession of the West New Jersey Society throughout much of the 18th century, but they ran into an early problem. You see, large joint stock companies like this often supervised their land from an ocean away without any direct contact. Agents would administer the property and send reports back to England, but with large land holdings and news being so slow to travel across the Atlantic, you can imagine how easy it was to overlook important updates concerning their property. In 1717, the society was informed that their share of land in Chester County was involved in a sweeping civil lawsuit concerning unpaid taxes dating back 30 years to the 1680s. John Simcock, the Chester County Clerk of Courts, introduced a civil case on behalf of the proprietor, William Penn, for unpaid taxes on the remaining 20,000 acres of the original 30,000 acre tract. The court ruled in favor of Simcock and ordered the county sheriff to seize 467 acres of land to cover the debt they owed in back taxes. So in February 1718, Sheriff Nicholas Fairlam auctioned the property to the highest bidder, and that was David Lloyd who paid 50 pounds. Keep in mind, at this point, the property was not clearly surveyed. The court essentially said Lloyd, the highest bidder, would receive 467 acres to be surveyed at a later date. David Lloyd is an important character in this story. The young lawyer earned the respect and trust of William Penn, who sought Lloyd's legal advice on issues concerning the colony. When Lloyd had relocated to Philadelphia in 1686, Penn immediately named him the Attorney General and he would go on to lay the foundations of the early Pennsylvania judicial system. But in addition to Penn, Lloyd also captured the attention of three enterprising men seeking an agent in North America to supervise their land claims and to offer legal representation. Yep, you guessed it. Dr. Daniel Cox, Sir Matthias Vincent, and Major Robert Thompson hired David Lloyd as their attorney in 1686 only a few days after being appointed the Attorney General. Now while Cox, Vincent, and Thompson's dreams of success in this area failed, Lloyd ultimately succeeded. The three investors were disengaged from Chester County by 1692, but Lloyd, he was only just beginning. His legal career took off, being elected to the Pennsylvania Assembly first in 1693, and then he was re-elected 22 more times. He went to serve in several influential positions like Attorney General, Speaker of the Assembly, Chief Justice of the PA Supreme Court, as well as several local county positions in both Chester and Philadelphia counties. But besides his accomplished civil career, Lloyd was also a savvy and forceful businessman himself, much like his former acquaintance Dr. Daniel Cox. Many local historians have credited David Lloyd as the main developer of early Euclid Township, 
despite never living there himself. By the time Euclid Township formed as an organized municipality in 1712, Lloyd had purchased more than 4,100 acres. The area had two major roads and was conveniently situated near the Brandywine Creek. Lloyd likely understood the area was on the verge of development and prosperity, so he invested in cheap, sparsely settled land in hopes of flipping it for a profit. So in 1718, when the Chester County Sheriff auctioned 467 acres of land, Lloyd jumped at the opportunity. Not only was he invested in this broader area in northern Chester County, but he was also quite aware of the legal situation and financial history of this land as the original attorney for the new Mediterranean Sea Company. Lloyd paid 50 pounds for the right to 467 acres, and when it was eventually surveyed and laid out, his new purchase formed the thumb we've been looking for. But why here specifically? Well, we can only speculate, but there are a few reasonable explanations for that. First, remember that Lloyd was heavily investing in Euclid Township, so he wanted land that could be easily incorporated. In other words, he wanted land physically adjacent to that township. Secondly, we need to consider the status of this 20,000 acre tract. Remember, when Robert Thompson died in 1691, his one-third share got knotted up in a nasty estate settlement. And when Cox sold his one-third share to the West New Jersey Society in 1692, the society had a very laissez-faire approach and administered the land from afar. With so much confusion and uncertainty surrounding this valuable plot of 20,000 acres, the Penn family became involved and they prevented outright ownership in the area. Instead, this land could only be leased. There's not a single deed for this area between 1691 when Thompson died and Cox shortly thereafter sold his share to the West New Jersey Society until about the 1780s when the land was repatented to clean up title rights. So when the time came for Lloyd to survey and claim his 467 acres, he knew the land should be located directly adjacent to Euclid Township so he could add his new purchase, one, to an area that he was investing in, and two, to an area where he would be recognized as the outright owner, not just a leaseholder. Lloyd only wanted property he could eventually sell. I mean, that was his entire business model in Euclid Township. And anyone wondering why Lloyd preferred, you know, this strange thumb as opposed to a clean northwest to southeast line just needs to look at the terrain along this municipal border. Lloyd was likely drawn to the thumb because it included flat, well-watered land that would be attractive to farmers. The terrain along the Upper Euclid and West Vincent border is uneven, hilly, and rocky, except for one strip of flat land conveniently supplied with a steady water source in the form of the Pine Creek. Lloyd had few options, but he took advantage of the topography in the area, even if it created an unusual boundary line. In May 1726, residents of Euclid Township asked the Chester County Court of Quarter Sessions to clarify the official municipal boundary of their township, which the court complied and explained that Euclid included the tract of land now or late of David Lloyd, formally taken in execution from the said tract laid out to the said Dr. Cox and company. So that's how Euclid Township acquired its thumb. Then of course, the township split in 1857 with the creation of Upper Euclid Township out of Euclid. And there you have it. The Upper Euclid thumb was not the result of conflict or sloppy surveying or natural boundaries. Rather, this interesting municipal line is the product of empire and business ambitions and beaver fur and even unpaid taxes. The central characters of this story lived three centuries ago, yet were still directly impacted by their actions to this day. Residents in this section of Chester County pay taxes to Upper Euclid Township instead of West Vincent because someone centuries ago didn't. <laughs>